Hey everyone, welcome into the Recruiting Roundup brought to you by IBEW Local 640. I'm Claudia Collins and joining me again today is Cody Cameron. We're going to talk about things that you need to be putting in your off-season toolbox. Last time I had you on, Cody, we were talking about social media and how to make the best huddle film, but we've got other tips and tricks for you today too. We're going to get into health and wellness, but first, Cody, something that you talk about all the time is preaching this D1 or bust mentality and why we shouldn't have it. Break that down for me. It's all about keeping your options open, Claudia, and, and recruiting is a numbers game, right? So almost uh, most of Arizona high school football players and high school football players in general will not suit up and play college football. That is a statistical fact. A small percentage of that will play college football, and an even smaller percentage of that will become Division I athletes. Recruiting is a mess. You know, the recruiting landscape has really changed the last couple of years for a number of reasons, right? So the extra year granted from the COVID season had inflated rosters and these, these programs that had sixth and, and sometimes even seventh year seniors in it, that drastically changed the recruiting cycle. Also with the transfer portal, uh, you know, players are able to transfer freely one time. Now they're granted the, the free transfer and instead of having to sit out in an FBS to FBS transfer for which it was, it would always was, they don't have to do that. So a lot of times you talk to these division one college coaches, they go, Hey, do I want the, the question mark 17 year old who has never lifted in a college weight room? Doesn't know if he can be in a college classroom or am I going to take that 22 year old SEC offensive tackle who's already six, seven, three 30 played in a college environment. I know he can get it done. Also, he's got two more years. Are, are there any players that you could think of that didn't go D1? Maybe they went D2, D3, NAIA that eventually made it D1 or did something else with their career that wouldn't have happened if they didn't consider those options. Been covering high school football for five years now down in the state. One of the best high school football players I ever watched was a Centennial Coyote by the name of AJ Jackson. And shout out to Coach Cat over at Lake Forest. He landed AJ and AJ. So now I'm going to say this AJ 100% could have played Division I football. I mean, I had just graduated from NAU. I watched Big Sky football the last four years. He would have been a baller in the Big Sky Conference, without a doubt. He chose the Lake Forest route because Coach Cat recruited him tremendously hard. He had great GPAs. He saw all the stuff that Lake Forest offered in terms of internship programs and small classroom sizes. And he saw all that and said, hey, this is the match for me. I'm going to go play Division Three football. One of the best Division Three football players in the entire country the last couple of years. Another one, more recent, Mac Molander. He's smart quarterback the last couple of years. Very intelligent football player and phenomenal athlete. He chose to go D2 in Augustana University. And a great pick, another player. When you look at tangibles and the stats in the film, right up there with a lot of D1 guys chose the D2 because it was a better fit. And I fully expect him to ball out. All right. I want to move over to health and wellness, something that everybody should be focusing on, not just in season, but in the off season. We are in an era of misinformation. Anybody yeah. can scroll on TikTok and get health advice from God knows who on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it might be. If a student athlete has questions about what they should be eating, how much they should be sleeping, how much water they should be drinking. Who do you advise they go to? The sports trainers. They are highly intelligent and studied this for many, many, many years. Um, an example I use is like Saguaro. They go to football camp with us and their trainer, Nikki, is a butt kicker. She is like a coach on the field with them, but all the off-season training and nutrition and, and recovery she does with those athletes that is, she's a huge reason why that program has been so successful. And then a lot of these coaches, they have major background in sports therapy and either living it. So like Coach Tuck at Hamilton, he's always preaching recovery and lifting and diet all the time on Twitter. He lived that world. He, I mean, he's speaking from example and he knows exactly what works. So a lot of these staffs have guys who, who knows what works. And a lot, a lot of times this trainer on campus is a great resource to have. Cody, as always, great advice. Thanks for coming on and giving some tips and tricks for this off-season toolbox. Anytime.